Today we're talking about the different ways to put a red dot on your pistol. Hey guys, my name is Dave Tim. Thank you very much for checking out this video. Today we're continuing our conversation talking about pistol mounted red dot sights. Now this, in my opinion, is the future. I do think there is uh, gonna be a growing market for this, not only in just the law enforcement tactical uh, competition side, but also it's gonna trickle down to the individual owner, the permit to carry holder, the home defense owner, whatever it might be. I do think that the future is with putting a red dot on your pistol. Now, in our first video, we talked about just kind of a general overview of red dot mounted pistols and kind of the pros and cons of having a red dot on your gun. Now in this video, we're gonna actually dive into how to get the red dot on your gun, some of the different methods and the pros and cons to each of those. So each video segment is not meant to be its own standalone, but we're kind of breaking it up into chunks. But if it's something that is interesting to you, please make sure you check out the entire series. In future videos, we're actually gonna to go to the range and do some drills, talk about site acquisition, finding the dot, getting your rounds on target, and taking advantage of the benefits of having a red dot on your pistol. So what are the two main mounting methods to get a red dot on your pistol? Well, all of them include, of course, having the red dot somehow attached to the slide. However, there is an alternate option where you can get different frame adapters, something that would mount to like the Picatinny rail or the accessory rail of your pistol, and then it would mount uh, up and go over and mount your red dot on the slide. So that is a method. However, we're not really gonna be discussing that much in this video, but there are some mounts out there. The downside with those mounts is they tend to add a lot of bulk to the pistol, and they also uh, are really difficult to find holster compatibility issues with, you know, as far as finding a holster that will fit those mounts. But that is a mount that's out there. So the method that we're gonna be talking about today is mounting the red dot on your slide somehow. Now there's a few different options actually. Number one is to have it attached to the slide via machining or via a factory plate, or number two is to actually have it attach uh, via the rear sight dovetail. Now there are a few different products on the market that allow that attach to the rear sight dovetail. That is not my preferred option, however, the pros of that is it generally is more uh, user friendly as far as cost and installation. You don't have to have a special pistol, you don't have to have any machining done, and all you basically can do is just drift out your rear sight and you drift in a new plate into the rear sight dovetail and then the sight mounts to that plate. It's very simple, it's very inexpensive, and it's good for users who maybe just wanna get a taste of it without actually committing to either buying a new slide, having it machined, or buying a new gun with a machined slide from the factory. So those options are out there and there are some quality options. I don't uh, have any of those, so I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but I know Aimpoint makes one to mount their uh, micro site. There's an aftermarket company uh, that makes one, I think it's called the Baylor mount. I d don't quote me on that, but that you know allows a lot of the mini red dot sites to mount right on the uh, slide via the factory dovetail. So that's a, an option there. The downside to those is they aren't quite as durable as having the uh, slide machined or using a machined slide to attach the red dot. And it also does add a little bit of height. So we are having that dot sit a little higher up and it could make co-witnessing or using backup sites more of a challenge. So that's one option. The other option is having it attached to your slide. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So you have a couple of different options. Number one, you could take your slide, send it off to a machine shop and they would actually machine this surface here and then your site would sit right on there and it would mount directly to the slide. And in my opinion, that is the best, most durable way to do it. The cons are you're committed to that particular site and it can be expensive. However, you do have some more options. So number one, I would actually prefer to have my site further back and then to have my backup site dovetail milled in in front of the site. Now why I like that is in case I was uh, doing some one-handed manipulation drills or anything like that, having that site in front of the optic 
would help protect it. So if I was bumping it on my holster or something like that, that rear sight, that mechanical rear sight, that iron sight would act as like a bumper to help protect the window of the optic. Additionally, it moves the sight, the optical sight further back for holster compatibility, just making it a little bit easier to fit in different holsters that are out there. So that is a preferred option if you're going to send your slide out it's something to consider. Now having the rear backup sight or mechanical sight, you know, behind the optic isn't that big of a deal either. So and that's how I run my gun. So it's not that, not that big of a deal, but you do get some uh, advantage if you can pick, you know, if you're sending your slide off to a machine shop. So again, expensive, it does take a, a little bit of time for a machine shop to do that. There also is refinishing and you are married to that particular site that you choose. Now the best, way to get that sight fit in there is to send your sight with your slide. They'll machine the two together so they're married. It's a real solid fit and a good quality machine shop will do a great job and you won't have anything to worry about. The downside, other than the things we talked about before, is what if you want to change optics? All of a sudden, let's just say the, the next version of the RMR or uh, Delta Point or whatever comes out and it's a different footprint. So the, the actual bottom dimensions are different than what you have. You might be out of luck. That's a realistic downside to that, is that you're committed to that. So there is something to be said about that. Uh, of course, you can buy a new slide. Slides are, in some cases, just as expensive as a gun. Now, the other option is to go with like a factory option, like this Glock MOS system here. Now, the advantage to the Glock MOS system is it's a factory option. You don't have to send your gun off to machine shop. You don't have to have anything refinished or anything like that. And then it has basically a machined area here that uses these different plates. And these different plates are for the various optics. Now, for example, with the Glock system here, uh, you have different plates that come with the package for different optics. So the advantage is it comes with the factory if you buy that gun. Uh, and SIG makes a gun like that, Smith & Wesson, FN. There's a couple other companies that are making, you know, uh, Springfield. They're making guns with, you know, the factory optics ready, so to speak. And they have these different plates. So the advantage is if you have the gun, you don't have to worry about additional machine uh, costs or anything like that. Additionally, you can switch out optics. So for example, if you wanted to switch from an RMR to a Delta Point to a whatever, you just use the different plate and now you can go back and forth. Now the other cool thing about this is we're starting to see aftermarket options too. So this aftermarket plate from Shield specifically fits their RMS sight. And it's a really, really low profile mount. As you can see here, it sits very low in the factory MOS groove and what's really cool about it is you can actually co-witness with the factory iron sights. So we sit in a period, and I know it's a little bit difficult for you guys to see on camera with the, the focusing of the dot, but it sits low enough where I can use factory sights as my backup sights. And I still have the factory ones on this gun. I'm getting ready to pitch those, don't worry. Uh, but then we can also see the dot through the window. So it, it's a really, really slick system. So this is from Shield, and it's their system with their RMS and their low profile Glock plate. Now I've heard rumors uh, that other manufacturers might come out with their own aftermarket plates as well. So we'll stay tuned and, and see what happens there. Uh, so that's kind of a quick pros, cons. You know, what option should you do? Should you send your gun out to be machined? Should you, you know, buy a factory gun? And ultimately the decision is up to you. You have to consider cost, you have to consider long-term you know, marriage, am I gonna be stuck with this optic? Now, I currently run a Trigicon RMR and now the Shield RMS, and they're both really, really high quality optics, and I really wouldn't feel bad about being married to either one. However, what I do like about the MOS system is number one, it's cost effective. I can get a factory gun, relatively inexpensive as compared to taking a, a regular Glock and having it machined, and then I can, you know, have some freedom going back and forth to different optics. So that's kind of what I'm gonna be going with. However, if you were starting from scratch, already had a gun, you're okay with sending it off to a machine shop, that is certainly a really, really good option as well. I hope this answered a little bit of questions about mounting. If you want to continue this conversation with me, I really look forward to seeing your comments. Please leave comments below. You can send us messages. Uh, you can you know, get in touch with us. If you want to see specific things talking about red dot pistols, let me know. Like I said, our future videos are going to talk about drills and presentation and getting you know, out to the range. So I hope you found this series helpful. We'd love to hear from you. Please like, share, and subscribe and we look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a great day.